is uh, transparency and uh, corruption an issue in uh, Calgary? No, 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 that's east of Ontario, not west of Ontario. <laughs> um, transparency is a huge deal for me. A very, very, very big deal. And so, for example, there was headlines in the newspaper yesterday or the day before that I happen to have a signed basketball for Magic Johnson, which is very cool. Uh, <laughs> and the reason that those headlines were there is because ever since I was elected, um, I have been operating on a system of transparency that went, goes well beyond what is legally required. And, um, and I now have gotten my whole council to operate on the same system, which is great. Um, but I disclose everything, all gifts, uh, everyone I meet with, um, my campaign, my office expenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that is very, very important. Municipal government, at least in Alberta, is by far the most transparent level of government. As I always say, we do our budget every November, and every single manager shows up live on TV and on the web in front of council to justify every line of their budget. No other order of governments uh, can offer that. But we have to maintain, we have to be very, very vigilant. And the findings of the Charbonneau Commission in Quebec are shocking and horrifying. Um, they should make any Democrat blush. And we have to make sure that we will never, ever, ever, ever go anywhere near that uh, by making sure that we have very open and transparent procurement policies, that people understand where the money is coming from, that we are forever inviting firms from outside of Calgary and Alberta to bid on our projects uh, to keep the whole system honest. All of this stuff matters uh, in a very, very big way, and it's something that I am very concerned about. You know, I'm going to say one last thing uh, before we finish, because there's one area nobody asked me about, and it's shocking that nobody asked me about it, so I'm just going to volunteer an answer to it, which is, here in this country, at this exact moment, we face an enormous danger. And that enormous danger is that this incredible society that we built together is at risk. And it is, it is at risk because of the crass political machinations of a few politicians in the province to the east of you. And I think that is a tremendous shame. I think that every one of us, as Canadians, owes it to this country to speak out against what Madame Marois is doing in Quebec, to speak out against the so-called Charter of Values, which I call a Charter of Racism, which tells children in this country that there are certain jobs you should not be able to do because of your religious belief. We have to remember that this country is built on what I said before. The fact that we have a country where it doesn't matter who you are, or what you look like, or how you worship, or whom you love. You should have that opportunity to live that great Canadian life right here. And I think we as Democrats and we as Canadians owe it to the nation to make sure that we are speaking out in favor of that diversity every single day. And to me, if you ask me what is the greatest risk facing Canada right now, I would tell you it's that. Because when you start these conversations, when you make it okay for people to talk about discrimination as though it's somehow a value of our country, you put the entire country at risk. And uh, I will tell you today, if there were a referendum in Quebec today, you would not get 100,000 people from Alberta demonstrating on the streets of Montreal, as I did in 1995, um, for keeping this country together. What kind of world do we live in where Albertans say about Quebecers, I'm not sure they share our values and I'm not sure they believe in human rights. That's a messed up world. Um, and it's something I think that we have to work on very, very hard and we have to work on together. Okay, thank you all. Thank you.